Now, flower photography is my specialty, and I'm holding nothing back. I show you all my tips and tricks, so stay tuned and see how I've done this. By the way, I'm featuring, I'm starting out in Lightroom, and then we go to Photoshop, and then I'm featuring a bunch of Topaz software. So stay tuned, and let's get started. I always start my editing process in Lightroom, and this is the original Camera Raw image with no adjustments on it. Now, I like the image itself, and uh, I thought hey, it needs a little bit of a crop, and obviously it needs adjusted. So I made a virtual copy, and I'll just show you what I did to it here. Um, I changed the white balance because I wasn't real happy with the white balance. Uh, ran the auto adjustments on it, and then just tweaked those up a little bit, and I'll show you the crop I made. Now here's the crop right here. So I felt, let's crop it in a little bit. It's going to look a little better. And don't forget, I always run my images through Gigapixel AI. So I don't really worry about my crop so much because I have Gigapixel to upsize the images to perfection. And after the crop, the next thing I do is just right click and edit in Photoshop. And then next up, we'll be in Photoshop. I went ahead and duplicated the background layer and called it Denoise AI, because next we'll send it into Denoise and get rid of that noise. But let's go ahead and zoom in on this image and I'll show you. You can see there's a lot of noise in here. I shot this at ISO 1600. There's a decent amount of noise in there. Let's go ahead and uh, come up to filter and we will launch uh, Topaz Denoise AI and we'll go ahead and denoise this. I'm zoomed into 100%. I have the side-by-side -side, uh, view on, and I have uh, auto detect settings set on. Doesn't look too bad. I still see a little bit of noise in there. Let's take a look up in here. Now, of course, you see that noise right there. Of course, I could take the remove noise and bump it up. But let's before I do that, let's try this new low light mode because remember, it's ISO 1600. And I always, before I do anything, I always go ahead and click this on and see what kind of a result I get. And yeah, look, that cleaned that right up. So I'm happy with that. And the noise looks good. Let's move over to another section here and just sample the noise. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy. I'm going to go back to the stamen right here. As I said at the uh, onset of this uh, tutorial, this image was relatively uh, sharp. Like these stamen here are really sharp. So I'm just going to go ahead and bump up the sharpening a little more. There's really no need to send this image into Topaz Sharpen AI because it doesn't have any camera shake issues or out of focus type issues, anything like that. If I, if I had those kind of problems, I would use Sharpen AI. But it's the sharpen inside of Denoise is fine. So let's go ahead and click apply. Well, the noise is gone. The image is sharpened. I went ahead and duplicated the background layer and called it Mask AI because next I thought... I like the background, it's, it's pretty soft, but I'd like to get a little bit more softness back there. And I love that feature inside of uh, Mask AI that lets you blur the background. So let's go ahead and launch Mask AI and we'll blur that background a little bit. This is real easy to do. I'm gonna make my brush size. I have the compute brush up right now. That's the blue for compute. Make it a little bit smaller. And all I'm gonna do is draw around this flower here, this daylily, really quick like. And I think it won't have any problem whatsoever on this image, but we'll see. I may want to keep these, these stems in focus here, but I'm not going to deal with that in here. I'm just worrying about the flower. I'll show you how I take care of that in Photoshop. Now, all we need to do is get a red paint bucket and give it a click on the area, area that we want to get rid of. So the flower we're keeping, the blue area is the compute area and the red area is the cut area. Let's go ahead and I'm in the mask mode AI or you have contrast. I'm going to use AI for the artificial intelligence. I'm going to go ahead and click compute and see what kind of a job we get here. And then we're going to use that blur background feature, which is really, really awesome for blurring the backgrounds. I like to use it a lot. I use it all the time. So let's go ahead and click on background and click on blur. And I'm going to shut off the tri map on the left hand side here so we can see the before and after. So the left will be the before, the right will be the after. So there is the uh, blurred background and it defaults at a 33. And that's not bad. Let's take it the whole way off. And let's just build it up slowly. I just want a little bit of blur in that background. I don't want to go crazy. You know, I could go like this, but that would look stupid, right? Unless you like that. But let's go. Remember, it was around a 33, so let's take it up to, again, I don't want to go too crazy. 
I might go around to 20. So look at the left and then compare it to the right. And then we can zoom in and take a look at our flower. Everything looks good on it. Like I said, I probably want to bring the stem back, but I'm going to do that in Photoshop, and I'll show you a real easy way to, to correct that, okay? So all we have to do is click Apply, and we have two choices here. Transparent, that would send this back with a layer mask on, or Composite, that'll send it back with a blurred background. So I'm going to choose Composite. I'll just click Composite, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now you'll notice here, it says Mask AI Copy. Actually, you know what? I really didn't need to make that extra Mask AI layer because I forgot in Mask AI, I set my Mask AI up to do that for me. So I could have left that step out. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and click the trash can and get rid of it. Okay, so here is our blurred background. Now here is the before and here's the after. Thanks, Mask AI. This new background looks really nice and soft. I love it. If you recall, when I was in Mask AI, I told you the stem here. I wanted to bring some of the focus back to these. They are out of focus, but I want to bring a little bit of that focus back into these buds back here as well. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the layer mask for the Mask AI layer right here. And make sure I'm painting with black paint. And I have 100% opacity, 100% flow. And I have a nice soft brush. I'm just going to paint that stem back in just like this. And these buds right here. So see how easy that is to fix? I just think it makes more sense. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the layer mask. That will disable the mask. So here's the before and here's the after. It just makes sense to bring those stems a little bit more in focus. The next thing I want to do is uh, sharpen up these stamen a little bit, bring a little bit of extra detail to them. And some of these areas, the sharper areas of the flower, I just want to pull a little bit more detail out of those as well. Not much. To do that, I need to bring all these layers together into a stamp layer. And I'm going to call this layer TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. Next, we're going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. I'm only going to use one filter here, so come to Add Filter and come to Precision Detail. I love this filter. It breaks your detail down into Overall Detail, Shadow Detail, and Highlight Detail. Today I'm just going to work with Overall Detail, but it also breaks it down into Small Details, Medium Details, and Large Details. And you also get some lighting adjustments here and some sharpening here. But I'm going to start out with the Small Detail. Now I'm only looking at the stamen and the, and the edges of the flower here, but mainly at the stamen. So what I'm going to do is pull up the small detail first. And see that detail just pop out of there? Really nice. A little bit of medium in there for some good measure. And a little bit of large. Right now this detail adjustment is over the entire image, which doesn't look good. I want to locally mask it onto the stamen and onto some of the sharper parts of the flower. Now usually I'll use this mask I icon here. I'll click on it and do my masking inside of TS2, which is great. But today I want to do something a little different. I'm going to accept this and we will do the layer masking using layer masking in Photoshop for something different. We need to add a uh, layer mask to this. So let's click on the layer mask. We also need to invert it. That's Command or Control I. That's the shortcut in case you're interested in that. That puts a black hide all layer mask on there. So our adjustment is hidden. I'm going to get a brush and simply it's a nice soft brush i have my opacity at 100 percent, my flow at 100 percent. i'm just going to paint the detail hey dave you're painting with black paint change it to white paint i'm going to change it to white paint and let's try that again i'm just going to paint the detail on the stamen here isn't that cool it just brings your eye onto those stamen because i think to me that's a nice focal point of this image right here and then we'll get this guy too now, I also told you I want to put some extra detail on some of the sharper parts of the flower. But to do that, I'm going to cut my opacity way down. I'm going to cut it down to 20%. Give myself a little larger brush, and I'll just paint it onto some of these areas. And if, I, if I'd go with 100%, believe me, it would not look good at all. It would, it would be garish looking. This is a nice, delicate, beautiful flower. And that's one thing you got to remember when you're doing these kind of detail adjustments. You don't want to add super high amounts of detail on flowers. Because if you do, it's, they're going to look ugly. But on the stamen, great. On the flower, hold back on it somewhat. 
I'm at the point now that I always come to in my image where I'm really studying it out and seeing if there's any things I need to correct. And there's a couple things, and they are, see this little bit of white here coming off this stem? I want to fix that in this little spot down here in the corner. I'm going to just add a blank pixel layer. I'm sure you've seen me do this before. I'm going to get a brush tool and change my opacity to 100% and change my flow to 5%. And I'm going to sample the color next to the color I want to replace. And then just simply paint with that 5% flow till that goes away. And then I'm going to come up to this area here. Right here, there's some orange in here. I'm going to sample this color and just paint some of that orange and just hide it. I'm, I'm not using a cologne or a healing brush. I'm just sampling these colors and, and fixing this. It's real simple to do. And just keep sampling colors around the area that you want to fix. And you'll fix them right up. Just like so. Doesn't take long to do. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. Sample some of this green from the stem. And just paint it around there. Just like that. Hit it a couple times. And I think that looks much better. So let's uh, turn this layer off. And let's turn it back on. It's a real simple fix. And let's name this Repair. Repair Background. BG for background. I went ahead and pulled all my layers together into a stamped layer and called it stamp layer. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to send it into uh, Nick Color Effects Pro 4 and use a really nice filter in there called uh, Dark and Light and Center. And it's a vignetting type filter and it does a really beautiful job. So what we're going to do is come up here to filter and launch Color Effects Pro 4 and I'll show you that filter. Here we are in Color Effects Pro 4, and on the left-hand side of the screen here, or the interface, you see all the different filters you have. And I'm look, looking for one called Dark and Light and Center, which is right here. I'm just going to click on that. It's a real easy filter to use. And it uh, just darkens the edges and lightens the center. Now, you have two different shapes you can use, more of a uh, round shape or more of an oval shape. I'm going to use the round shape. You have a, a center luminosity and a border luminosity, so you can darken the edges or lighten the edges whatever you like, and same with the center. You can darken or lighten the center. Generally, generally we're going to lighten the center. And then you have this um, place center uh, button right here. So give that a click, and you get this cursor. So I'm just going to click it right on my flower right here. And you notice how your eye is drawn right to the flower right there. Now, I haven't, I've made no adjustments yet, but let's click in the compare button here so you can see here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that beautiful how it just draws attention into the flower? And I think the settings are actually really good right where they are. Um, I might just pull the center luminosity back just a little bit, maybe to about a 20. Don't want it quite as bright. And of course, I could make the uh, border darker if I wanted to. Or we could do the opposite and make it light. But we're going to do, uh, we're going to do darker. And I think, right, I think it was at a 50 somewhere around there. So again, here's the before and here's the after. But that's beautiful. And all we have to do now is click OK and that sends us back to Photoshop. Well, there's the dark and light and center. Let's uh, check, check this layer off. There's the before and let's turn it back on. So I like that. Now let's take a look where we've come from. So we've come from here. We started out here. And I thought that looked pretty good at first, but now look at it. It doesn't look so good right now. Look at it. Uh, it came out nice. I'm really happy with it. But we started out with, uh, we brought it in from Lightroom. Then we added some denoising and sharpening to it. Uh, sent it into Mask AI, blurred out the background. And then we sent it into Topaz Studio 2. And we added some sharpening to the stamen and some of the parts of the flower petals themselves. Uh, we did some repair on the uh Stem here and uh, on this corner here we fix that up a little bit and then we send it into Nick software and use the dark and light and center and we ended up with this well there it is a beautiful day Lily um, I just shot this this morning by the way and it, it's so beautiful and I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. This is one of my specialties, uh, working on flower images and shooting flower images as well. I, I, I really love it. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. 